Hello everyone and welcome to the School Zone No Mods Contest Challenge Entry for me for, well, look, it's County Crossing. Uh, this is a very large settlement. I have pretty much filled as the boundaries of the borders. So I'm just going to get started while I do the intro here. We're going to go around the outside first and then we'll go inside and check out every little bit and piece of this monstrosity. Uh, if you are a School Zone subscriber who has never been to my channel before, I want to say welcome. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the show, and there is a lot of other builds like this in the archives if you wish to see more of this, uh, because this is pretty much how I build. So, this was done with a brand new character in vanilla. I didn't want to take a chance on having, oh look a tree, uh, I, didn't want to I didn't want to take a chance on having a previously modded character have like residue or whatever, and I wasn't sure my other vanilla characters were not suitable for this. So I basically just started this one on like very easy, blasted the game, did the DLC I liked, and built. Uh, she's like level 62 now, and of course since I'm a scaver by trade, I have plenty of materials to do all this building with. This entire build is a little over two size bars, like two and a quarter, something like that. Uh, let's avoid that water. But as you can see, the whole thing is enclosed because this is my take on what would be a moderately prosperous Commonwealth settlement. So uh, it's gonna be much more, um, it's better equipped than what I usually build, because I build scrappy, as you can see from here. So what we have here is a cow's butt, and then over here we've got the marketplace, which is the front portion of it. The back of it is the uh, settler's quarters and you know whatever. Now part of this challenge, part of the contest, is that you had to identify and point out three things that you used from the uh, Nomads uh, series. Uh, there's a series of videos, like I think there's like 20 of them that School Zone had done, Paul had done. Uh, when I get to those spots, I will show you. Uh, there aren't any like set pieces or anything, because the stuff that he shows is cool as hell, and I can see how those techniques work to use those particular objects and items in those ways. But since I build like this, those you know particular things don't really suit my my theme here, my style. So here's my gun vendor. Got himself a little bit of a snack there. Um, but yeah, here's the front courtyard. We have a gun vendor, uh, a general vendor, a bartender, and then a patio where travelers can sit and you know enjoy their meals or have a cup of coffee or whatever. And then of course the first thing I learned was the stool facing. That was the one, the first thing I picked up is you know when you set a chair in the menu a certain direction, a backless, a, a chair with the back. When you put any other thing, it's facing that direction. So those, I have like three or four of these little stools in there. I placed them using that. And that is a really, really handy little trick. Uh, I was still using, you know, patterns on the furniture to try and figure out where the front was. So that alone will save me a lot of time. So that was number one. But you got your patio here and uh, the general vendor shop. We'll look at her from the front here. Uh, some random stuff, her, you know, normal junk and uh, stuff on display, I guess. And since, they, uh, since my vendors like to live in their shops, you know, so the settlers don't have to worry about pathing back and forth, uh, this is her bedroom. She's got some personal stuff and some teddy bears and cats. Uh, she keeps the valuable items on the bottom shelf out of sight so she can get at them and sell them, of course. And then there's salt and pepper shakers, which are oddly uh, rare in the Commonwealth. They're very high, uh, high desire items. And the bartender's here. The front of his, the front of his shop is here. And he's got the normal stuff, you know, food and food and liquor and cigarettes. That's what he sells here. He's give you a, a little look at his little store there. So this is the front half. This is where visitors stop. This is where they uh, they hang out. And of course, you know, for security of a laser turret, uh, it seems a cleaner solution than a, an explosive weapon <laughs> when they're doing that. But in case they do get salty, there's a, another one tucked away here. Now this is the guard, the main guard house, guard barracks, and uh, gathering area, I guess you could say. You know, the mess hall, I guess, for the guards. So let me hit this switch here. This switch does the uh, clear weather um, grenades. I've got like 30 of them in there because uh, one of the mods I don't have is clear weather, and County Crossing gets foggy a lot more than I like. So they have their sel themselves a uh, weapons workbench for their maintenance needs when they come off a shift or whatever. They just fix what they need to do or polish their stuff up. And then their gathering areas here. Extra weapons, lockers, you know, a pretty pleasant little area for them to relax and hang out in. Uh, a couple of vending machines they hauled up from somewhere or bought from somewhere with 
throw bottles in a trash can because they don't clean them up to themselves. They're not very good at the whole uh, maintenance thing. They're mess hall, such as it is. Mismatched chairs and some food and stuff. So that's what they got downstairs along with some serious firepower here on the wall. And then upstairs, we've got uh, another sitting area where they can just hang out and keep an eye on the road, you know, yell at the uh, provisioners, throw bottles at them, whatever they want to do. The barracks is, uh, you've got your standard cot and storage and shelves arrangement for each one of them. Really bare bones here. They don't have a lot of stuff. They don't spend a lot of time here. They spend most of their time in their guard stations. So it's mostly food and drink and, you know, civilian clothes and they want to change and go hang out at the bar or whatever. And then we have our head guard, who is a ghoul. She, uh, she has decided to tell everybody, look, you've been alive for 30 years, I've been alive for 250. There's a reason I live this long. Shut up and do what I say. So yeah, she doesn't, she doesn't take a whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of back talk. And when she does, well, she's got her whip and stick here. <laughs> she lets them have it with Big Jim. So yeah, and that's where she stays. So there's, what, there's the, the barracks part. I'll jump up on top of this building here because we've got a good sight line over here. And you can see the whole rest of the interior of the place. This is the uh, everything. That's pretty much everything that's left. So I'm going to go through here, and this is the entry door, of course, from the shop area. Uh, here they have a laser turret. They couldn't figure out how to get the wiring to it, so uh, they basically just shove batteries in these little uh, these little containers underneath here and uh, wire it up that way. You can tell from the fire extinguishers we've had some accidents in the past, and they've learned to use welding goggles and oven mitts when they change them out. But still, every now and then it catches on fire, and that makes it a little exciting for everyone. Now, the original workshop is here. This is where the provisioners just dump stuff they can't find a place for. It's um, rudimentary in the extreme, but it serves its purpose for the initial breakdown. Close the door. Over here, we have another storage area for the provisioners. Uh, this is the pre-staging area for the breakdown, the breaking down area, which is in the back here. Fusion core generator supplies all their power needs, and the monitoring station keeps track of the vitals of the fusion core generator because, I mean, it makes sense that something this complicated and, you know, potentially explosive should have some serious computing power to maintain it, keep it in fine fettle. And then back here, we've got the... Uh, the area where they take junk and they break it down into component parts so they can make shipments. Because that's how, you know, the general store vendor, they, they sell shipments of screws and parts and whatever. But those have to come from somewhere and this is where they come from. So here's a bunch of stock and supply they haven't broken down yet. Here's their working table with their various tools and implements and liquids and whatever the heck else they need to do their uh, breaking down. Got a cow, because the cow came in on the settler, so, you know, whatever. Stuck him on the side there. This is the original shack, uh, where the original settlers were sleeping, slept. Uh, but of course, since I'm allied, allied with the Brotherhood, uh, we turned it into the, the only power armor station garage we have here. Since it's power armor, you know, you can walk it in here and turn it around. You don't need a lot of room, so most of the extra space is devoted to parts and tools and paint. And some holotapes with, I guess, configuration settings for the for programming the head. I don't know, maybe, or just whatever. So that's there. And then the first settler house, uh, we have our hermit. Now here's the second thing I used. Uh, in the contest video and in other videos he's done, he uses the scaffolding ladder as a group select anchor. And that is so stunningly handy. I, I'm like, that alone i mean half the buildings in here half the stuff in here i use that that technique over and over and over like getting those railings up on top of that roof from the ground building this entire little thing right here anything anytime you need something that's more than one story off the ground oh my god use it it's it's fantastic it's great for when you need to place something and you don't have good ground next to what you're doing because it's angled right so you can find good dirt anywhere so yeah that's the second one i used and oh my God, if it, if it came to frequency, that would be the one I use. I would count that as all three. I, that is gonna be one of my go-to tools going forward. It is amazingly useful. But he's got his stuff here, his personals, and uh, his hobby is trying to figure out how synths work. So he's got some synth components and diagnostic tools and, and coffee. Stays up all night trying to figure it out. He hasn't done it yet, but, but he keeps trying. We have a doctor. Um, she's the medic for the back of the settlement. She's the settler's doctor, the, you know, because what's his name? Weathers or whatever his name is comes around the front. But here's her shop. 
and she's got a really rough cut, uh, really rough cut operating table here with some magazines and I guess she does her learning. Kind of makes me nervous, but whatever. And her tools and supplies and she drinks a lot because, well, I guess I'm a doctor in the Commonwealth, you'd be very drinking too, I guess, right? And her own little research table. Here's the entirety of her inside of her house. It's pretty spacious. She's got a fairly large house. And she's got some supplies here on her uh, storage unit underneath her, her thing and she keeps wanting to talk to me because of course she's too close to the door. But here's the shop where you come up and you know, I guess she puts supplies in there, they drop off shipments or whatever. We'll look at the field really quick. It's uh, you know, a field, people working, dogs walking around. More supplies hanging out here. And then this is the second farmer's house. Uh, they double bunk in this thing. And they shoot the blood bugs. There's blood bugs coming up the road from that trailer a lot. So they, you know, took one of the corpses and stuck it on the wall. I don't know what they think is a deterrent, but it's not. So, anywho. And they have some bare bone stuff, but they're pretty luxurious in here for in terms of, you know, uh, relaxation areas. They've got a nice little resting area here. Another Nuka-Cola machine they dragged from somewhere. And their bunk and another chair and a plant. It's, it's you know, it's rustic, but it's cozy. It suits them well. They enjoy it. I haven't had any complaints, right? So that's kind of the kind of the good thing. And since we walled it off before the pond, we had to find an artesian well somewhere, and they found a good source right here. So they dropped this uh, they dropped this uh, water purifier here, and um, they keep a lot of supplies here to keep it running because it's critical this thing stays running because it's the only water they have, you know. So they got their tools and their you know lubricants and coolant and gas, lots and lots and lots of gas to keep this thing running. It sounds like a diesel motor, kind of no lawnmower. So the first big guard station, uh, independent guard station, is here. This guy watches the northeast approach. He keeps an eye on River Beach Station. He's got a little grenade guard there and uh, a little assistance from the missile turret here. So he's got that going for him. But, you know, a pretty pretty basic, pretty standard thing. Here's a look at the, uh, the settlement from the northeast corner with all the buildings surrounding the, uh, the farm because, of course, the farm is the, uh, the bread and butter of this settlement. And then here, let's look at it from the back. So yeah, it kind of curves around. It's kind of cobbled together, but he's he's pretty well barricaded up there. He's got a good place to crouch in case something comes across the field at him. And the third thing I used from the uh, from the school zone tips was uh, colored lighting. Normally, I've, I mean, I've used the neon letters in the past, but I've always just you know doubled and tripled them up to make them brighter. It never occurred to me you could do different colors and get different hues and shades and whatever. So this thing here, the shop light here, is actually kind of fuchsia which, you know, if you watch my channel, you know it's my favorite color. But that's two red and a purple, red, purple, then red, and it's stacked up and looked like that. So that's the third thing I use. And now that I know I can do other colors, I have a lot of ideas for using those things in various combinations. But here's the shop, the main workshop. It's got um, all the major uh, workbenches in it. And uh, again, extensive use of that ladder, that scaffolding ladder, because of course you can sink it in the concrete floors. So I was able to get these extra railings up here, these, these risers up there and the risers up there. And you know, various other things at various other heights. So I really enjoyed that part of it. That ladder trick was cool. You gotta try it guys, it's awesome. Main workbench is here, tools, paint, supplies, whatever. Uh, light bulbs, because you know, settlers always run out of light bulbs and they always keep yelling at you for light bulbs. So now they have a box of light bulbs on the floor. Your armor workbench with your standard supplies. And when I said they're very wealthy, this is what I meant. They have a ton of top flight, you know, industrial grade this, industrial grade that, just pristine scavenging. So they are, they are very well set here. Chem station with some experiments going on there and some decoration safety first, fire extinguisher, of course, gotta be safe. Uh, one of the two toilets in here, this one's, uh, well, there's plungers everywhere. So yeah, it's a toilet, it's a bathroom. Got the necessaries, two plungers. I guess the high protein diet's not doing that to win any favors, but hey! And then the uh, weapons workbench with again, more supplies and safety features like a fire extinguisher that they can use to do whatever they want to do. So the main guards are over here. These two watch the side gate, this one right here, which opens up onto the field. So we need a lot of guards keeping an eye on that thing. And of course, restricted area like they don't already know. Guard number one is here. Uh, they have a little coffee dispenser and a cart because these guys love coffee, love coffee. And there's another one of those benches. 
It's just a little resting area, a little, little area they can just stop and, you know, have a snack, take a break, whatever, take a load off while the other guys watch the, uh, watch the stuff. They all have either Gatling lasers or miniguns, so they are very well equipped. Most of the settlers have Gauss rifles or handmade rifles. And then they have their own commode over here with my, you know, my favorite lantern on a conduit. Group selected into the wall to make a lighting fixture. But it's a toilet. Yeah, not much to say about that. Then the head guard's office and bunk is here. I mean, it's, it's tiny, but it's better than, you know, racking up in the barracks down there. So, got the normal, typical stuff. Um, and there's this tiny little clipboard. I don't know where this clipboard came from, man. I wish I could figure it out, but it's cute as hell, isn't it? It's teeny. I dropped, I was trying to drop two clipboards and that little, that little one came out. I'm like, oh, oh, look at that. So there's her thing. And uh, you can see over here, you can definitely see the, the gate on this side. She's got a really good, a really good look at anybody who comes in the door. And then the other guard up the street can see down the street very, very well, all the way down there to the mechanist layer, all the way to the intersection. Nice barricades, nice sight lines, looks really good. So, what's next? There's my loner guy. This is the synth researcher guy. He likes to stay away from people, so he planted some potatoes in this little, on this little hill where the other turret's looking out the door. Take a, take a quick peek out there at this turret. So this small one covers that approach. And then covering the main approach from the Brotherhood of Steel is this turret here with that guard. So yeah, there's lots of eyes on this door. And nobody makes it through here. They've tried before, and the bodies pile up nicely right outside the gate. Uh, we do have two provisioners here, and this is their um, crash pad. Since they're on the road a lot of the time, they don't really have, they don't really hang out here much. So they've got some knickknacks they want to save for later or sell later. They just kind of throw it on the shelves here, and they've got some more knickknacks here. It's getting coming dark. I hope it doesn't get too dark. And then we have the main house, the main structure here. Uh, this is the largest structure here. Uh, ignore that platform. That's just my fast travel spot for taking screenshots later. But this is the back of the bar, and it's got um, a lounge area, another lounge area, with, you know, I guess these guys are playing checkers with caps or something, left their stuff out. These guys are sloppy, though, man. They don't ever clean up after themselves. And the bartender's got some secondary supplies under the stairs here. But he's got a pretty full-featured kitchen. He's got a pretty good setup here. He's got a little chair where he can, you know, take a break and holler at the people on the patio. He's got necessaries here. Got a little magazine to read while he's waiting for customers and uh, the typical cooking stuff that he needs to make food or just grab something off the shelf and heat it up or just rip open the box and hand it to somebody that wants it. His quarters, of course, are here. And this is your typical, typical rough and ready quarters, storage and some personal effects and some trash he hasn't picked up because these people are such slobs. And then back here, he has the luxury of having his own private patio where he can, you know, grill up some food or listen to the radio or just take a bunch of cams and just slop around in the chair. Well, because, you know, the only way through is through his house, through his uh, shelter there. But this is pretty cozy, nice and minimal functional and uh, he doesn't have any problem pathing through here either which is interesting I would have thought he had a problem and then I guess the last part of our tour is the Brotherhood monitoring station since this character is allied with the Brotherhood of Steel and she is a sentinel the Brotherhood wanted to make sure they can keep in touch with her when she's at her main settlement which is this one so holotapes and the terminals and the computers store messages and you know couriers drop things off here bunch of parts and stuff they can use for research, study, to keep the equipment in working order, who knows. And uh, the communications dish here points directly at the Pridwin because it's way over there. So when they send signals, you know, they pick it up really loud and clear here. And uh, again, more maintenance stuff for the dish and tool supplies, stuff they left out, technical manuals so they can uh, maybe improve the strength of it or learn how to build more for other settlements. Because this turned out to be quite a handy thing to have that sort of instant kind of um, communications. And I think I did it all. Yes? Is that all of it? Yeah. Okay. So let's go out to the front, and then we're going to do a real quick run through at night so you can see the lighting. Because uh, it looks kind of cool at night. It really does. It really does its, it does its thing. 
So I'm going to put it right here so I can line it up when I get back. Oh, look, there's a cow in the tree right in the caravan outpost. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sleep or rest here really quick, and I'll be right back. So here we are at night, and of course, we've got a Brahmin on the roof because, yes, Brahmin like to be on the roof. Here's my provisioner. I always give him mining helmet so I don't actually shoot him in the head when I see him in the wild and there's a fight going on. But I'm just going to run in here really quick. Yeah, I've already done the descriptions for these, so I'm just going to peek inside and you can see how this place is lit up. The marketplace, of course, is very, very well lit. Um, but most of the settlers prefer oil lights. They prefer um, candles and lanterns and stuff like that. So there's the marketplace there and the patio here. And then her shop. Looks pretty good. She doesn't really do a lot of business at night, so the, the front of it isn't lit up as well as the uh, as well as the weapon shop is. And everybody likes to hang out around the bar because, yeah, they do. Oh, look, the doctor's cooking. Let's go run in here into the barracks. Nice and dark here so it doesn't ruin their night vision if they have to run out of here in a hurry, I guess. Another warning, keep the hell out of here, please. Thank you. Pretty well lit here. The weapon board's lit there. And then there's this because of course in vanilla you can't get rid of that lantern so i had to sort of incorporate it into the overall motif and it came out pretty good same thing with the fires out in front the campfires you can't move them you know so you kind of have to figure out a way to build around them or make them work with your make them work with your thing but yeah this is a fun challenge this whole thing is like i said lower two size bars two and a quarter size bars and it took no, I, I don't, I don't want to, I want to say about 35 hours total building time, prepping time, and decorating time. Because, oh, my Lord in heaven, decorating in vanilla is, I, I had forgotten how much I love OCD. <laughs> I have a new appreciation for it. Because the thing is with decorating, you know, it's not hard to decorate in vanilla. What's hard is to decorate a lot and be constantly panicking about settlers knocking your stuff off or a settlement attack coming and explosives blowing everything all over the settlement or, you know, things falling through shelves. It's, oh God. But this stuff here stayed put pretty well. Um, I've learned to keep settlers out of places that are, are cluttered, like this place here. There's no settler uh, interactable objects here. No chairs, no benches, nothing in there for them to play with. They will mess with this terminal from time to time. They'll come in here and like, hold their chin and poke at it, but they, they don't know how to use it because, you know, it's tech from like 200 years ago or whatever. And uh, the power armor station, of course, very, very bright, focused light on the uh, on the work area, dim everywhere else. A little bit extra light over here by the, by the thing there. And then uh, here's the house, the, the loner's house, the settler house, with his lighting fixture. But again, Pretty bare bones, pretty standard, nice and nice and comfy. He doesn't have a problem pathing in here either, which is interesting, because I would have thought, as cramped as that is, he would have had a definite problem. Doctor's office, not lit at all, because, well, the Red Cross will tell him where she's at. And uh, very dark, she needs as dark as possible to sleep. Second settler house, second farmer house, spot lighting, and then oil lighting. Uh, the guard, of course, no light for him. Some extra tires and cones they've got for, I don't know what they're doing with those. Somebody got a bright idea to do something with them, but they haven't, they've just been sitting there for like two weeks, so I'm not sure what's the story there. And the inside of the, of the workshop, and you can see how much the natural light during the daytime really helps light this thing up. Those glass, those glass uh, roof pieces really help in that regard. Go back to the guards, and of course the guard stuff is very, very dark because they need to see, but of course their, their sitting area is nice and lit. Go over here, and then the guard station here. And lights in the candles, uh, candles in the ashtray like I do. But that's there, that's the guard thing. And da 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 Take a look at the gate here. Because at night, there's these track lights, right? And yeah, anybody trying to get in, they're very well illuminated. So that looks pretty good, I think. And of course, the dish lights up like crazy, so that's kind of neat. Go over here, do a quick run around here. And this is 
since it's a gathering area, of course, it's uh, better lit than most. Oh, and look, they knocked all the stuff off the shelves. And you know what happens is the settler spawns in that corner. That's what happened. So y'all can pick up after yourselves. I am not picking those up. Freaking slobs. Okay. <laughs> Here's his thing. And the night, the, night, uh, the night grill looks like this. Go upstairs to the uh, outpost. Again, pretty well lit here because they they have to you know receive messages day or night, and they don't do a lot of work on this thing at night. And if they do, I guess they can just get a portable lamp and do it. So <laughs> I almost made it, guys. I almost made it, but nope, nope. Settler spawn got me. Laser turret with its thing here and its batteries and its stuff. Man, well, yeah, didn't catch on fire though, so we got we got lucky on that one. And that is about it for this one. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the tour. I hope this is interesting. Uh, I hope you enjoyed what you saw. Uh, if you if you want to know how any of this stuff was built, I recorded almost all of the building process. So if you have anything that you want to see in particular, I mean, drop me a comment, drop me a note, let me know what it is. And uh, I'll, I'll dig through the archives and find it and post it for you. So here is the entire settlement. I want to thank you all very much for subscribing, liking, and watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.